discussed about linear applications of apyam those are adders subtractors integrator differentiator etc now we are going to discuss about non linear applications of apyam in that we are going to discuss comparator smith trigger logarithmic amplifiers anti logarithmic amplifiers and precision rectifiers coming to the comparator so we are having two types of comparators first of all we have to know what are they they are first one is normal comparator and the second one is smith trigger or regenerative comparator so here you have to know about the difference between normal comparator and regenerative comparator in the normal comparator we are going to be used op amp in open loop configuration whereas coming to the regenerative comparator there we are going to be used op amp in closed loop configuration now i am going to discuss about op amp in open loop configuration which is nothing but the normal comparator coming to this case here i am going to take an open loop op amp which is consists of positive terminal and negative terminal and uh, having output voltage v not and it should require two supply voltages plus vcc and minus vee and the positive terminal will be taken as vp and the negative terminal will be taken as vn this is about the op amp in open loop configuration and we are going to be used as a comparator first we have to know about definition of comparator what is a comparator and why we are going to be used these comparators first definition of comparator comparator is nothing but the comparison of the two input signals which we are applied at the input terminals of an op amp which is nothing but comparator so here in this op amp we are having two inputs one is inverting input vn and the other one is non inverting input vp so if you apply the inputs at the two input terminals if you are comparing those two input terminals then we will be treated it as comparator so comparator consists of only two outputs whether it may be plus v sat or whether it may be minus v sat why we are having only two outputs for the comparator why because here we are using the op amp in open loop configuration so the gain of the op amp is infinity or it may be a very high value so even if you apply the or if the input is changes because of the noise then immediately the output will be saturation level that may be plus saturation level or it may be minus saturation level depending upon the inputs okay now generally in case of comparators always we are going to consider one of the input as a reference input and the other input is or no terminal and we apply the reference voltage at another input terminal and always our input is comparing with the reference input and depending upon the comparison it may be positive saturation level output or it may be a negative saturation level output so here we are having in comparator we are having two types one is inverting comparator and the second one is non inverting comparator once we can clearly understand the concept of comparator then we can easily design the regenerative comparators first of all we have to know about 
first one is inverting comparator and the second one is non inverting comparator and now i am going to discuss about first one is inverting comparator here i am considering a apyam i am considering the open loop apyam and the dc supply voltages are plus vcc and minus vee and we are having two input terminals one is non inverting input and the other one is inverting input and we are having one output terminal v0 and see this one here we are using the inverting comparator that means we are going to apply the input at the inverting terminal so i am applying the input v in at inverting terminal and i am considering the non inverting terminal e is connected to v reference voltage okay now i am considering the reference voltage will be equal to zero that means i am not giving any reference voltage so we may directly consider the reference voltage as zero now in this inverting comparator what we are going to do is we are going to compare our input with the reference voltage so what happened at the output if your v input is greater than v reference then you have to get your output voltage as minus v sat and if your v input is less than v reference then you will get your output as v not is equal to plus v sat these are the main two output conditions depending upon the input voltages so whenever you have to compare the two inputs you have to observe these two statements so if our input v in is greater than v reference then you have to see what happened for your v not and if your input v in is less than v reference then you have to see your output what happened to your output for v not now i am going to draw the input and output wave forms so here i am considering the input as a sine wave so i am taking the input as sine wave and it should be like this okay so this is zero this is t by 2 and this is t and in this case i am going to consider the reference voltage as zero so v reference will be taken as zero and here i am going to draw my output okay so now tell me what happened if your v in is greater than v reference and if your v in is less than v reference i already stated two statements for the output voltage of inverting comparator so if your v in is greater than v reference here my v reference is zero and my v in will be positive value that means it will be greater than v reference then i may get my output as minus v sat until this i may get my output as minus v sat and what happened when v in is less than v reference if my v in is less than v reference then i may get the output voltage as positive value that means plus v sat this is the way we are going to represent the output wave forms for the comparator and coming to see the input and output wave forms of comparator i want to tell you that this is also called as sine wave to square wave converter and one more important point i want to tell you is whatever may be the input you applied as an input of the comparator always you are going to get your output as a square wave okay that is the very important point whatever may be if you apply the input as triangular wave if you apply the input as a ramp signal if you apply the input as a sine wave cos wave whatever it may be you will get your output as always square wave 
okay now this is about the inverting comparator next one more thing i want to tell you is if you have taken the v references other than zero values you can also observe the wave output wave forms same conditions you have to get for the output voltages okay so now i am going to explain non inverting comparator there i am going to be consider v reference value is other than zero and we will see what happened for the input and output wave forms so second one i am going to explain is non inverting comparator if you clearly understand about the inverting comparator then it is very easy to understand about non inverting comparator similarly we have to take the op amp in the open loop configuration this is plus and this is minus but in this case i am applying the input at the non inverting terminal and the reference voltage is applied at the inverting terminal that is v reference now i am going to apply the v reference is other than zero that may be the v reference may be a positive value or that may be a negative value that is our choice depending upon the application only we will be consider whether it may be the positive v reference or whether it may be the negative v reference or it is the zero so here i am taking that plus vcc dc supply voltages minus vee and here we are getting the output voltage as v not okay similarly what we have seen it for the inverting op amp here also you have to see in the out, uh, conditions for the non inverting op amp so in case of non inverting op amps sorry non inverting comparators okay that is also a non inverting op amp but it will be in the comparator form that is the only difference so what happened is when your v in is greater than v reference value then you will get your output v not as plus v sat and if your v in is less than v reference value then you will get your output as minus v sat so these are the two output conditions for the non inverting comparators okay so here we have the conditions for the inverting comparator when v in is greater than v reference v not is minus v sat when v in is less than v reference v not is plus v sat similarly here you are having your output conditions for the non inverting comparator now i am going to draw the input and output wave forms so here and again here i am going to consider the wave form as input as sine wave okay this is v input and this is t this is zero t by 2 and this one will be t next i am going to draw the output wave form okay so this is t so in this case we are considering the reference voltage here i am considering the reference voltage is a negative value so your reference voltage is here this one will be taken as v reference you may consider the reference voltage is positive value also at that time you will get the reference voltage is at this position okay positive side so now i am going to see what happened for my output non inverting comparator output depending upon the output conditions when my v in is greater than v reference then i may get the positive saturation level that is plus v sat and my v in is less than v reference this is less than this is v reference then i may get negative saturation value that is minus v sat okay 
minus v sat. So you have to know about where we are going to get the positive saturation level and where you are going to get the negative saturation level. Okay, these are the inputs and output waveforms for the inverting comparator as well as non-inverting comparator. So whatever may be the input you have to apply, whether it may be in the inverting comparator or whether it may be in the non-inverting comparator, always you are going to be get the output as a square wave. Okay, here I have shown you the two output waveforms for the inverting as well as the non-inverting condition. And here I have represented the conditions also. Okay, now I am going to discuss about the applications. Applications of uh, comparator. Now I am going to explain the applications of comparator. There are several number of applications for comparator. But we are going to discuss some of the applications they are zero crossing detector, level detector, window detector and pulse generator. These are the main four applications of uh, comparator. First we are going to discuss about uh, zero crossing detector. The basic comparator circuit itself can be considered as a zero crossing detector. Here I am considering the non-inverting comparator. So, non-inverting means we are applying the input at the non-inverting terminal and the inverting terminal is nothing but the reference voltage but it, now I here apply at the reference voltage as zero and this is plus Vz, sorry, plus Vcc and uh, here it is uh, minus Vee and uh, this is output across the load in this case we are going to collect the output okay now see this one applications of comparator in that zero crossing detector the basic uh, non-inverting comparator or you may use the basic uh, inverting comparator as a zero crossing detector so what happened how can you conclude it as a zero crossing detector for an example if we have considered the input waveform V in, sorry, with respect to time and it, it is V in, here I am going to consider it as time varying with respect to time and here I am going to take the sine wave 0, T by 2 and T. Now I am going to take my reference voltage will be equal to 0. Okay, here it will be considered as a non-inverting comparator and we all know that when V in is greater than V reference, we will get V naught is equal to plus V sat and when V in is less than V reference, then we will get V naught is equal to minus V sat. These are the two output conditions for the non-inverting comparator. Okay, now here I am going to take those two conditions and I am going to draw my output waveform. So, when V in is greater than V reference, here my V reference is 0 and my input is uh, uh, positive level. That means it is greater than V reference. Then I may get my output as uh, plus V sat. And in this case, my V input is negative and my V reference is 0 input is less than V reference then I may get the negative saturation level okay now that is minus V saturation level so whenever the input is switches from 0 then what happened the output is also varying that is when V in is greater than 0 we will get plus V sat when V in is less than 0 we will get minus V sat that means whenever our input is crossing the zero, automatically your uh, in output is varying or your output is also crossing zero level. So that's why we are calling it as a zero crossing detector. Now I am going to explain the second application which is nothing but level detector. And the circuit shows the 
level detector. In this case, we are going to detect the level. One of the input terminal of an op amp is biased to a input level detector, which we are going to be find out. So here the non-inverting terminal is biased to a V level, which is nothing but the voltage drop across the resistor R2. So this circuit is nothing but the non-inverting comparator. And now how I am going to calculate the level detector by using this inverting comparator. Here I am going to consider the input waveform. Okay, this is V in and here I am going to consider the input as sine wave and it is 0 T by 2 T. Okay, now with the help of non-inverting input terminal, we are setting a level. We may set the positive level or we may set the negative level. No problem. Whatever may be the level. Just here in this case, we want to calculate the level detector input. You may set the positive level or you may set the negative level, but you want to calculate the level in this case. So, this is the inverting op amp and you all know the conditions for the inverting op amp. When V in is greater than V reference, but here in this case it is V level, we will get the output as V naught is equal to minus V sat. And when V in is less than V level, then we will get V naught is equal to plus V sat. And these are the output conditions for the non-inverting op amp in this case. And here I am going to represent the output waveform. See this one. This is my V level. If my V input is greater than V level, then what happened? I may get the minus V sat. So assuming initially my input is at plus V sat, plus V sat. Once my input is crossing V level, then immediately my output will go to minus V sat. And until this, my output goes to minus V sat only. Okay. If my V level is greater than V in, so this is my V level and my V in is in this case very less. That indicates my V level is greater than V input. Then immediately I will get the positive reference. Okay. Until this we will get the positive reference. Okay. So with this input and output waveforms, we can easily calculate the value of V level depending upon our outputs. That means if your VN is crossing, so you can observe at which point your VN is crossing V level. Then we will be considered that point as V level. Okay now. So similarly, we may calculate negative V level also. Okay. Then you should bias the non-inverting input terminal to negative V level. So this is the application of level detector. Next explains about uh, very important application of comparator which is nothing but uh, window detector. Sometimes one may like to find out the unknown input value between two threshold levels. For this we are going to be used the window detector. So this circuit is called as uh, three level detector with indicator circuit. Why we are calling it as a three level detector is here I am considering the three levels. Those are V input is less than three and V input is in between three and six and V input is greater than six. So I am considering the circuit for the explanation of window detector is like this. 
and for the indicators i am going to be used leds here led 1 is uh, taking as in yellow color led 2 is uh, in green as well as led 3 will be taken as in uh, red color and led 1 will be operated with uh, low voltages and led 2 is operated with uh, medium range voltages and led 3 will be operated with uh, high level voltages that means uh, led 1 is operated when your input is less than 3 and LED 2 will be operated when your input is in between 3 and 6 and the LED 3 will be operated when your input is greater than 6 volts. So, take care while you are choosing the LEDs. Okay, they will be operated with certain voltages. Okay, now here I am considering two non-inverting comparators as well as uh, indicator circuit for the construction of window detector. So, you all know that the output of uh, non-inverting comparator, when V in is greater than V reference, it is positive saturation. When V in is less than V reference, then you will get V naught as uh, minus uh, V saturation value, so, that is uh, minus V sat. So, first, uh, I am going to consider V in is less than 3. So, here I am considering the input as uh, 3 volts, uh, 2 volts. And here also, the same input applying that is nothing but 2 volts. Then, if you compare, what happened in this case? If you compare the two input voltages, then 6 volts is greater than 2 volts, then you will get minus V sat. And here also 3 is greater than 2 volts. Once again, here also you are getting minus V sat. And it is minus V sat and both will be forward biased. And this is reverse biased because it is minus V sat. And it is also reverse biased and because this is minus V sat. So, LED 1 will be on and the remaining two LEDs will be off. That's why I told you that LED 1 will be operated for low voltages. And the second level I am considering is medium range level. If my input is in between 3 to 6, I am considering my input here as 4 and here also I am considering the input as 4. Then what happened? Again here I am getting minus V sat. Why? Because V reference is greater than yeah, v input voltage and but here I am getting it as plus V sat. Why? Because the non-inverting input is greater than reference voltage. So what happened now? This one will be forward biased and this is reverse biased and the, this is reverse biased. So LED 2 will be on and the remaining two LEDs will be off. That's why I told you that LED 2 will be operated for medium ranges only. Like that only we have to choose the LEDs. Last but not the least is LED 3. Okay now. So we are considering the last condition. V input is greater than 6 volts. Then what happened? If I am considering my input as 7. And here also I am considering the input as 7. Then I may get the output as plus V sat and here also I may get the output as plus V sat. Now what happened? Due to the forward bias it will be operated but this LED range is in between 3 to 6 only. So the green LED is also off in this condition and it is reversed bias. Obviously the yellow color will be off. And last but not the least, this will be operated with high voltages. So, and this is also forward biased and you, the LED will be on. And this is the way we are going to calculate the unknown input value between two threshold levels. For that, we are going to be used the window detector. This is the very important application of the comparator. Now, I am going to consider the applications of comparator. In this, the next application is pulse generator. So, here I am considering an op-amp, open loop op-amp, this is plus, and here I am going to consider it as minus, and the non-inverting -invert terminal is connected to ground, 
and we are applying the input at the non-inverting terminal okay and the output of the non-inverting terminal will be considered as v naught one and which will be applied to the differentiator here the differentiator is constructed with the help of rc okay and then we are passing the output of the differentiator uh, uh, with the passing the output of differentiator through diode then we will get the output across the load we are going to collect our output okay this is uh, pulse generator so how can you collect your output so here you are treating as v naught one and here you are going to treating as uh, v naught two so here what i am telling is uh, pulse generator for this i have taken the open loop op amp so if it is a non inverting op amp then what happened if it is a non inverting op amp if you are applying the input as like this okay then due to the non inverting op amp if v in is greater than v reference here i am considering the v reference is also equal to 0 then i may get the plus v sat and less than v reference then i may get a minus v sat so it is plus v sat and here i am getting it as minus v sat so the output is nothing but here it has v naught 1 okay that will be passing through the differentiator and you all know that when we apply the input as a square wave for the differentiator you may get the train of impulses so you may get the positive impulse as well as you may get the negative impulse okay so this is nothing but v naught 2 and the output of v naught 2 will be passing through the diode if the diode is connected like this then that will be eliminating the positive pulses uh, sorry that will be eliminating the negative pulses only then we will get only the positive pulses okay this is the way we are going to generate the pulses okay that's why if you the diode is connected in the reverse fashion then it will be eliminate the positive pulses then we may get only the negative pulses and this is the way we are going to generate the pulses that's why the comparator is also used as a pulse generator and next now i am going to explain about time marker generator now i am going to draw the circuit of time marker generator if you have seen the circuit diagram of time marker generator then it will be similar to that of pulse generator so here i am going to draw the time marker generator positive terminal and it will be negative terminal okay i am applying the input at the positive terminal and the negative terminal will be connected to ground okay and uh, here i am collecting the output v naught okay and it will be differentiated with respect to r and c okay this is r and this is c and here we are getting the output of the differentiator v naught one and that will be applied uh, that will be passing through the diode then you will be get uh, positive pulses okay and uh, we are connecting a resistor here across the resistor we are going to collect the output okay and this is the circuit for the time marker generator so tell me what happened for this i am going to draw the waveforms first i am going to draw the input waveform this is v in and this is the uh, input is varying with respect to time and here i am going to draw the sine wave okay so i am considering my v reference will be equal to zero so when the input is comparing with the v reference signal if input is greater than v reference then i may get v plus v z if input is less than v reference then i may get the minus v z that's why we are also calling it as zero crossing detector also okay so here i am getting plus v z here minus and again here i am getting 
plus V sad. So this is plus V sad and here we are getting it as minus V sad. And the output of the comparator is passing through the differentiator. And we all know that if you apply the input as a, a square wave, then you will get the output of the differentiator as a train of pulses. So here we are getting the positive pulse and here you are getting the negative pulse and once again you are getting the positive pulse. So these train of pulses are passing through the diode. Then what happened? That eliminates the negative pulses. Why? Because here it is corrected like this. If it may be corrected in the reverse fashion, then it can be eliminate the positive pulses. Then finally we will get the positive spikes only. So the positive spikes are like this. And we are getting the positive spikes. And if you mark the time in between these two positive pulses, then that will be taken as time marker generator. And there is one more important point is the frequency of the output pulse is same as it is that of frequency of input pulse which is about time marker generator. We are going to discuss about regenerative comparators. So there is a drawback in the comparator. To overcome the drawback of the comparator, we are going to regenerate to comparator. First, we have to know about what is the drawback in the comparator. The comparator is operated in the open loop configuration. When it is operating in the open loop configuration, the gain of the RP amp is very high. Due to this, the small noise voltage at the input side also can switch us the output from plus V saturation to minus V saturation or from minus V saturation to plus V saturation. That means we may get the uh, zero crossing detector which is uh, unwanted zero crossing detector that means rather than the wanted input signals uh, we may get the zero crossing detector for the noise signals so the zero we may not get the exact zero crossing detector for the wanted signals in case of uh, comparators to overcome this drawback we are going for the regenerative comparators. If you clearly observe the basic circuit diagram of comparator, there you are not using any feedback path. But whereas in case of regenerative comparator, if you are looking this circuit diagram, you are going to be used a feedback path. And comparator is one of the application of non-linear applications. Okay, why we are calling it as non-linear application is if you are applying the feedback to the positive input terminal, then obviously they are all treated as a non-linear applications. In this case, I am connecting the feedback with the help of a resistor R1 to the non-inverting terminal. That means the output signal is in phase with respect to the reference signal. That's why we are calling it as a feedback, positive feedback signal. Both are of same phase. That's why we are calling it as a positive feedback signal. So to overcome the drawbacks of comparator, we are going for the regenerative comparators. Here we are having two types of regenerative comparators. Regenerative comparators is also called as split triggers. The two types of regenerative comparators are inverting split trigger and as well as non-inverting split trigger. Here I am going to discuss about the basic inverting split trigger. Okay, I think you all know that why I am calling it as a basic inverting split trigger. Why? Because here I am applying the input at the inverting terminal of an RP amp. So 
That's why I am calling it as a inverting Smith trigger. And listen carefully whether it may be the inverting Smith trigger or whether it may be the inverting comparator. The outputs are same. No doubt about it. There the outputs are plus or minus V sets only. Okay now. Here also for the Smith trigger the outputs are plus or minus V set only. But the output change is always depends upon the resistance values and uh, these resistance values are uh, uh, carefully selected to change the output voltage so here it is treated as a inverting smith trigger why because we are applying the input at the inverting terminal and we all know the conditions for the non inverting comparator as well as inverting comparator similarly those conditions will be also used in this case for the inverting smith trigger i am going to be used the conditions are when v in is greater than v reference value okay then v naught is equal to minus v sat similarly when v in is less than v reference value then we will get v naught is equal to plus v sat here also we are going to consider the same conditions what we have taken for the inverting comparator but here the v reference voltage is controlled by the resistances r1 and r2 okay so what happened for the v reference so the v reference will be taken as apply voltage divider rule v reference is equal to v naught into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 and next again v reference will be taken as v naught into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 why i have taken two v references values is if v naught is positive then we will get the positive reference voltage and if v naught is minus v sat then i may get the negative v reference value suppose if i am going to take an as v naught is equal to plus v sat then it is plus v sat into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 okay then we are calling it as a positive v reference and if i am considering v naught is equal to minus v sat then it is v sat minus v sat into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 then we will be treated it as minus v reference and the positive v reference will be considered as upper threshold voltage okay that is also called as vut upper threshold voltage and the negative v references when v naught is equal to minus v sat it will be treated as lower threshold voltage that is taken as vlt so always in case of smith trigger the output voltage level the change in the output voltage level is not only depends upon the references particularly they are dependent on the vut and the vlt values okay so when vut and vlt values are calculated you have to concentrate on the hysteresis value why we are considering hysteresis what is hysteresis okay now very important concept hysteresis is this is called is is also called as dead band or dead zone okay so the hysteresis is calculated as h is equal to vut minus vlt so vut is equal to plus v sat into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 minus half minus v sat into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 so we will get 2v sat into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 so choose v sat value amplitude is sorry choose hysteresis values amplitude is greater than the amplitude of the noise input signal so the output voltage is not changed one once it will be below the 
threshold level. If the input is uh, crosses that threshold level, then only the output voltage will be switches from VSAT to minus VSAT or from minus VSAT to plus VSAT. But why I am choosing this hysteresis is even if the noise voltages, there will be no change in the output state for the regenerate to comparators. But whereas in uh, uh, comparators because of the high voltage gain for the open loop RPMs even for the small noise voltages occurred at the input signal immediately the output will be changes to plus VSAT or minus VSAT but whereas in case of regenerative comparator we are creating a dead zone or dead band with the help of hysteresis and always the magnitude of the hysteresis is greater than the noise voltages so even if the noise voltage present at the input side there will be no change of the output state once the exact input is changes at the input side due to this only our output will be changes to plus v set or minus v set so while take care of generating the output voltage when V V in is greater than V U T, then you have to express the output voltage. Similarly, when V in is less than V L T, then you have to express the output voltage. But if V in is in between V L T and V U T, then the output is same as it is that of previous state. If the previous state is plus V set, once again it will be in the plus V set only if the input range is in between V U T and V L T. If the previous state is minus VSAT then it will be in the minus VSAT range only if the input is in between VUT and VLT. So you have to choose uh, concentratedly take care of choosing the values of R1 and R2 and always the hysterious range is greater than the noise amplitude range. So that is about the non-inverting Smith trigger. Now we are going to see the output waveforms as well as the transverse characteristics of going to see the transverse characteristics of hysteresis for the inverting Smith trigger as well as input and output waveforms of the inverting Smith trigger. Just now we have seen it. VUT and VLT values as well as hysteresis values for the inverting Smith trigger. Once we calculated VUT and VLT, hysteresis will be VUT minus VLT. That will be equal to 2V sat into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. That's why in the previous slide in the previous lecture i told you that take care while you are going to change the output voltage of the smith triggers is depending upon r2 and r1 values why because vut and vlt values are depends upon r2 and r1 resistor values only that's why i have given the statement as the output voltage is depends upon the resistance values generally the output is depends upon vut and vlt values but why I am telling it as the output is depends upon R1 and R2 is VUT and VLT are depends upon R2 and R1 values and in this case I am going to represent the transverse characteristics the input is representing on X axis and the output is representing on the Y axis and here I am representing it as inverting Smith trigger so we have to know about the conditions for the inverting Smith triggers if your V in is greater than V U T then your output will be equal to minus V sat and if your V in is less than V L T then you will get your output as plus V sat. So here initially you have to consider your output will be in one of the states whether it may be plus V sat or whether it may be in the minus V sat. Once if suppose if I am in a minus V sat condition okay if my V in is less than V L T then what happened I am in the minus V sat condition and my V in is less than V L T then immediately I will go to plus V sat condition. Why? Because V in is less than V L T we will get V naught is plus 
V saturation level. Similarly, suppose if I am at the plus V saturation level and if my V in is greater than V U T, then immediately I have to come to minus V sat. And uh, these directions are represented with the help of arrow marks. And uh, this is the way we are going to representing the transverse characteristics of hysteresis. Hysteresis is nothing but the dead zone and dead band. Why it is required? for the uh, split trigger is uh, to eliminate the unwanted transitions at the output side we are going to create the hysterious range at the uh, for the split trigger now here I am considering the input wave form as a sine wave form and uh, I marked as the VUT values and VLT values and uh, initially I am at the plus V saturation level you have to choose whether it may be plus V set or minus V set that is compulsory so initially I am at the plus 2 saturation once if I crosses my V input is greater than V U T then what happened immediately I will get the negative saturation level and once my V in is less than V L T then what happened immediately I will move on to the plus V saturation level. This is the way we are going to represent the input and output wave forms with the help of VUT and VLT values only. And listen, there is one more condition is there. What is that is if your V in is in between VLT and VUT, then what happened? Then your V naught is same as it is that of previous state. Okay. Your V naught will be same as it is that of previous state and in the problems also they will ask you to calculate hysteresis value while calculating the hysteresis value uh, you can uh, take care whether it may be the inverting split trigger or whether it may be the non-inverting split trigger so i am going to explain about non-inverting split trigger First of all, we have to know the difference between inverting Smith trigger and non-inverting Smith trigger. In case of inverting Smith trigger, we are applying the input at the inverting terminal of the Smith trigger. Whereas in case of non-inverting Smith trigger, we are applying the input at the non-inverting terminal of the Smith trigger. Now, here also, we have to calculate VUT and VLT values. Why? Because for the Smith trigger, uh, we have to calculate the VUT and VLT values. Once your input is crosses the threshold values, then only your output will be switches from one state to another state. That's why here also we have to calculate VUT and VLT values for the non-inverting split trigger also. With the help of this non-inverting split trigger, why we are calling it as a split trigger is in this case, I am applying the uh, feedback from the output to the non-inverting terminal of an op amp with uh, uh, through the uh, resistance R1. That means uh, we are applying a positive feedback. Why? Because uh, the output voltage is in phase with respect to the input voltage. That's why we are calling it as a positive feedback. Now, by using this circuit, I am going to calculate VUT and uh, VLT. First, uh, the voltage at node A. So VA will be calculated as I in into R2. Yes, directly I am representing. VA is equal to I in into R2. And the input current drawn at the input terminals of an op amp is 0. Or the total current passing through the op amp is same. Then we are going to be consider I in is equal to V naught divided by R1. Now, assume V naught, whether it may be plus V set or whether it may be minus V set. If you are assuming V naught is equal to plus V set, then I in is equal to plus V set divided by R1. So, once we calculated V naught as plus V set, then that indicates you are going to calculate VUT value. If we are treating V naught as minus V set, then we are going to calculate VLT value. So, here VA will be equal 
equal to I in means plus V sat into R1 divided into R2. So, substituted this I in value in this equation, then I get VA is equal to plus V sat. Now, this will be taken as VUT. Similarly, if you have chosen I n is equal to V0 is equal to minus V sat, then I n is equal to minus V sat by R1. Then I will get I L T is equal to minus V sat into R2 divided by R1. H is equal to hysteresis V U T minus V L T. Then you will get 2 V sat into R2 divided by R1. In this case, hysteresis value is 2 V sat into R2 divided by R1. So, once the input is crosses VUT value, then you will get the output as plus V sat. If the input crosses VLT value, then you will get the output as minus V sat. Why? Because this is non-inverting split trigger. So, here I am representing the conditions are if is V in is greater than VUT, you will get V0 is equal to plus V sat. And if V in is less than VLT, then you will get V0 is equal to minus V sat. And this is representing the transverse characteristics for the hysteresis. So, while we are going to draw the transverse characteristics, we are going to draw in between output voltage and input voltages. Always we are considering the input voltages on x axis and the output voltages on y axis here see this one once if your v in is crosses v u t then what happened then you will go to plus v sat and if your v in is less than v l t then you will coming to the minus v sat that's why here i am representing the values with the arrow marks so now i am going to draw the input and output waveforms for the non-inverting split trigger here i am considering the input t is like this this is v in and here i am considering it as t and i am treating it as v u t and here i am treating it as v l t so now i am going to draw the output waveform Initially, I am considering my output is at minus V sat. Then, what happened if my output is at minus V sat initially? Once your input is crossing V U T, then immediately you will get your output as plus V sat, and it will be in the plus V sat until it reaches to the V L T. Okay. Once your input is very much less than V L T, then what happened? Then you will reach the minus V sat value. This is the way we are going to represent the input and output waveforms for the non-inverting split trigger. We are discussing about applications of Smith trigger. So, till now we have seen it about uh, inverting Smith trigger as well as non inverting Smith trigger. Now, from the uh, inverting Smith trigger and the non inverting Smith trigger, we conclude that we already explained one of the application of Smith trigger. What is that? Which is nothing but the conversion of sine wave into square wave. Here, there are two more uh, applications are there in the Smith trigger. That first one is eliminating the comparator charter. So, first of all, you have to know what is a charter. Charter is nothing but, or charter is defined as the multiple productions of output due to the input voltage swing in the threshold region of a comparator which is nothing but a charter. For an example, if you have considered an inverting comparator, why I am calling it as an inverting comparator is, here we are not having any feedback path, as well as the input is applied at the inverting input terminal. So, for the comparator, we doesn't have any VUT and VLT values. And here, what happened is, the square wave is representing the output and the uh, AC is input signal is representing the input signal. Okay, here what happened is see this one. If your input is uh, changes like this, for this 
if it is an inverting comparator if your v in is greater than v reference then you will get your output as minus v saturation and if you v in is less than v reference then you will get your output as plus v saturation okay now see this one here my v in is greater than v reference then immediately i will get the minus v sat and there is a charter see this one this portion is treated as a charter that is unwanted noise signal okay that because of that also because of that also your output will be uh, switches from minus v sat to plus v saturation and this chartering is eliminated with the help of smith trigger coming to the case of smith trigger here we are going to construct the hysterious band that is vut and vlt a threshold upper threshold value as well as lower threshold limit so in that range if there is any multiple transitions in the input signal because of the noise there will be no change in the output signal for an example here if your vn is crosses v if your vn is crosses vth then only you will get the output as minus v saturation here there is a chartering which is generated because of the noise and the chartering is in between the hysterious region so there will be no output transition is generated because of the chartering only the output is switches from one state to another state once it crosses the vth and vtl ranges and always the hysterious range is greater than the magnitude of the chartering which is nothing but the magnitude of the noise now is now smith trigger which is nothing but on and off controller so here i am using the non inverting comparator as an on and off controller here i am going to be used the temperature controller what happened for the output of the non inverting smith trigger so when v in is greater than v u t then v not is equal to minus v sat and whenever v in is less than v l t then v not is equal to plus v sat these are the two output states of inverting smith triggers now coming to the on and off controller here because of that temperature sensor it uh, receives the temperature and once the temperature is uh, reaches the or crosses the vut value then v not will be minus v sat and if the temperature is below the vlt value then v not is equal to plus v sat initially i am considering my v not is equal to plus v sat because of this the transistor will be on and the heater is all so on once my v in is crosses v u t then what happened then v not is equal to minus v sat then immediately the transistor will be off and the heater is also off so the on and off of the heater is depends upon the output of the smith trigger that's why what i am telling is the temperature on and off controller is used as a smith trigger here i have shown it you that if your v in is uh, touches the v u t value that is uh, if v in is equal greater than v u t then what happened then immediately your output will goes to minus v saturation similarly if v in is less than v l t then what happened then immediately you will go to plus v saturation and if you were uh, temperature is in between this range then there will be no variation in the output state and the heater on and off should be maintained the previous state only if the temperature is exactly in this range why because we are taking the variations of temperature on and off controller is used as a smith trigger is temperature is not varying sharply that means if you are 
आर यूजिंग एज ए कंपरेटर एंड इफ यू हैव टेकन द रेफरेंस वोल्टेज एज जीरो वंस योर इनपुट इज चेंजेस आर क्रॉसेस बिकॉज़ ऑफ द नॉइस आल्सो रादर देन द टेंपरेचर देन इमीडिएटली योर आउटपुट विल बी प्लस वी सैचुरेशन और माइनस वी सैचुरेशन डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द ऑपरेशन ऑफ द स्पीड ट्रिगर सो सिमिलरली हियर आई एम कंसीडरिंग द सिमिलर कंपरेटर सिमिलरली हियर आई एम कंसीडरिंग द स्पीड ट्रिगर सो व्हाट हैपेंड इज योर टेंपरेचर इज नॉट वेरिंग शार्पली सो इट विल टेक सम अमाउंट ऑफ द टाइम टू चेंज द इनपुट टू चेंज फ्रॉम हाई लेवल टू लो लेवल और फ्रॉम लो लेवल टू हाई लेवल दैट्स व्हाई वी आर कंसीडरिंग द स्पीड ट्रिगर फॉर ऑन एंड ऑफ ऑफ टेंपरेचर कंट्रोलर सो बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस इफ देयर इज एनी वेरिएशन इन द टेंपरेचर temperature because of the noise and if the noise is always uh, below the hysterias range then there will be no change in the temperature so the heater on and off position is depends upon the previous condition